I saw, I saw this video. I thought it looked pretty interesting, so let's watch it. Now nearly all grocers in New York City say they have been victims of shoplifting this year alone. And 60% of those stores say they've been burglarized every single day of the week this year. So the city's fallen to a point where if there's something on a shelf, anything, it is a target for thieves. Who've now set their sights on our food supply, robbing local businesses until they shut down. And the city is powerless to stop this from So like... I, I I just think it's amazing that we've finally gotten to the point where it's grocery stores that people are robbing. Like, people are running in and stealing bananas and bottles of water and that kind of stuff. Like, I think that's... Oh, we'll get to it. <laughs> for some reason. As we all know, retail theft rings are an ongoing problem for bodegas, grocery stores, mom and pop businesses. And like, this is something that normally in the past, like when you think of a robbery, you think of banks, you think of jewelry stores, you do not think of Kroger, but apparently that's where we're at now. Like, no longer is, like, normally you see that stuff and you think, this must be for resale. Like, they're trying to make a buck here. There's some kind of, like, they're saying robbery rings like either groceries have gotten to the point that it's so valuable to steal them that you can resell them on the black market the way you could iphones and diamond rings or people are just trying to feed themselves because they're unable to both common and luxury retail chains i think a lot of people would be surprised that it's almost every single day coffee cheese shrimp you gotta eat every day, you know? Like, I wouldn't be surprised if it's grocery stores being robbed. Like, I go shopping almost every day for groceries. Like, you go to the store, you buy what you're gonna eat that day, you come home, you make it, you eat it, maybe for like two days. And then you go back to the grocery store. Like, just because you're not using money doesn't mean that the rules have changed, you know? Like, it's hard to get out of Sam's Club with a whole bunch of, like, you know, the, the packages are big. So you go to like a small grocery store and you grab like steaks and a bag of chips and you run out the door with them. That's going to happen every day. That's one meal. Nothing is safe. Are you concerned sometimes for your safety? Absolutely. <laughs> Retailer is just open game. Walk away with anything. Simple shop. Dude, like I, you know, I feel bad. Like I don't want to, I don't want to like make it seem like I'm out here trying to, trying to make light of this situation. It's horrifying. Like, it's really, really bad. I just like, like, it's like business owners who are suffering from this and, and it's people who are suffering and that's why they're causing the suffering on others. Uplifting's really graduated to organized, sophisticated crimes. It's like the wild, wild west out there. Shoplifting is a misdemeanor. Merchants want increased penalties. Shoplifters, which Governor Kathy Hochul is going after, introducing a $45 million initiative to drive down retail theft. The smash and grab efforts, they go in and swipe everything off the shelves. Oftentimes, they're loading into a stolen vehicle. Meanwhile, here in New York City, it's reported that retail... I mean, that's wild. I, I often, when I drive by and, like, think about crime, you know, as, as a person does, when you're out and about and you're... You're like, how would I get away with this? How would I get away with robbing a place? The first thing you think is like, well, you'd have to steal a car first. Because if you, you need a car to get away, and if your car isn't stolen, right, then like they're going to like just see your license plate, and then it's game over. So you have to steal a car. You probably need to steal two cars. Because you need, <laughs> can I get in trouble for this? You probably need to steal two cars because you have to have one waiting somewhere else where it's like a, a, a trade-off zone, somewhere that like there's no street cams, there's no way that like a helicopter can see you doing it, so you can drive to that place with the first stolen car, get in the second stolen car, drive away, and then they don't know who was in the second stolen car, and then, you know, you're, you're good. You're good to go. Tellers lost close to four and a half billion dollars last year. We are all victims when retail theft happens. It drives Wait, up the cost of things. who lost four and, and a half billion dollars last year? York City, it's reported that retailers lost close to four and a half billion dollars All of retail, not a super retail. We are all victims when retail theft happens. It drives up the cost of things, and it also creates this environment where people are hesitant. Yeah, it drives up the cost of things. What's the... Uh, revenue. So they've lost four billion dollars in retail revenue is only five point five billion dollars. I don't I don't thirty trillion. Oh, okay. 
the global retail market generated sales over 27 trillion US dollars. That's the global market. Retail sales in the US increased. So they must be talking about the global retail market lost $4 billion. It's the only thing I can think of. That's like, if that's $30 trillion to $4 billion, like, you know, there's a certain amount of theft that people expect whenever they're they're having like like a business being done. I mean, like we do we do shows, and I just expect that stuff is going to walk off that table. Um, it's it's the the cost of doing business. I can't be everywhere at once. Do I wish it didn't happen? Obviously, but like I'm not out here trying to you know trying to like increase the prison sentence for someone who stole a bracelet from me. So almost 100% of grocery stores have been shoplifted recently. But nobody's talking about how New York City's latest plan to stop shoplifting won't actually punish the people who shoplift. Instead, it's only aimed at punishing people who become violent while shoplifting, which means peaceful shoplifting can continue surging out of control with organized theft rings running full-time businesses, not just targeting retailers like Macy's. See, this is the thing, though. Like, it's if it's a desperation crime, which is what shoplifting is most of the time. Most crime is desperation crime, right? Like, most people do not want to be criminals. It's dangerous to be a criminal. And they're, like, in situations where that's one of the only options for them. Like, punishing people isn't going to dissuade them from being criminals. You need to take away the desperation, because the other option for them is to like starve to death or to have their family starve to death. And that's like not an option, you know? Like everybody has a line, but once they go below that, like things are going to get shady. Now they'll rob your local grocery store and offer stolen you don't oranges at a bodega you or a curbside produce truck. Because even though stealing physical merchandise like a North Face jacket will make you more money, those are now chained to the stores that sell them, so they're harder to make off with. But the real reason shoplifting continues to surge to levels we've never seen before is because it's still possible in this city to steal under $1,000 worth of stuff and not go to jail. Which means any thief can start their own business tomorrow selling products they got for free, effectively closing down the store they steal from who then have to compete with their own stolen merchandise and what's truly insane is how thieves are now literally threatening the food supply of new york city and if this continues it could make things tougher for some of the city's neediest residents when the grocery stores and this is like this is like super difficult i mean you know the reason there's a market for this stuff is because the value of it is too high like people who need it can't afford it so it's being stolen to be sold at a lower price. That's like, if, if they could be competitive with the stolen price, then they wouldn't, they wouldn't have to compete because people want to go into a store and buy the things they don't want to buy from some random dude where the packaging is all messed up and wet for some reason. Like, they want to buy it from a store and want it to look brand new. But, like, things are ridiculous, you know? I used to buy, buy, used to buy a case of egg whites from Sam's Club. It was seven dollars in twenty twenty one, and now that same case of egg whites is like thirteen fifty, like double the price. You know, like every time I have to buy those, I think like this used to be two cases of egg whites. Bodegas they rely on shut down so for far. good. Now that's really sad. People like use these stores. I mean, there's you don't have a Kroger to go to in a place like this. Ahmed is owned stop one deli here on gun hill road for 30 years now he says they are robbed on a regular basis and fearful of doing anything about it are you concerned sometimes for your safety absolutely for my safety and the employment safety minutes away also in so first it was macy's then it was walgreens and now it's the small mom and pop independent stores that sell food who are now being targeted which makes sense because once you put the big chains out of business all you've got left are the local yeah. businesses and if a big drugstore like this can't figure out how to secure its product what chance does your local bodega or grocery store have? Most of what they sell can't even be locked up behind the progressive plexiglass we see everywhere in this city. Because they sell food, because they sell beverages, most of what they have cannot be chained behind something. And when you combine that with insanely high rent, for what in most cases is a very tiny little storefront, you've got a situation where these businesses are not exactly making I don't. I don't know what the end game goal is, right? Like, I'm not sure where all of it's moving to. If, like, the crime is so bad that big businesses don't want to be in an area, 
but like the rent is so high that small businesses can't afford to be in the area. Like who's supposed to be in the area? I mean, all over Charleston, there's just a bunch of empty office buildings. I mean, like every single office building downtown is just like for lease, for sale. Like who is who is supposed to be there? If there's no money being made, wouldn't you rather some money being made? Like it it feels bizarre millions and that doesn't leave a lot of extra money lying around for security guards but just as your local bodegas are getting looted into oblivion the same thing is happening at your local grocery stores and when one of these places shuts down it could take the rest of the neighborhood with it no, away totally. also is carlos collado 30 year resident 15 years as the manager at this fine fair on white plains road shit though like i <laughs> i don't even know where most people are buying their groceries i know that most people don't have vehicles and like I drive through neighborhoods where there's not a grocery store around for two miles. Like, are people just like, you just got to take a bus to the grocery store or walk to the grocery store? Buses are expensive now, too, man. Like, man, it, uh, people are wild, dude. I mean, it's, it's just nuts out here. Sending a surveillance video shop after at a surveillance Dollar General, video man. while describing a new climate of emboldened shoplifters. They feel like the law protects them, like there are no consequences. Totally emboldened. So now, to understand how shoplifting is never a victimless crime, this grocery store, it's the only one in the area. Everybody living around here, this is the store that they shop at if it's gone. Where are they going to go? And even if the store itself doesn't close as they deal with theft, they have to raise their prices because if half the stuff on the shelf gets stolen, the other yeah, half has to cost 100% yeah. more for them to make the same amount of money. And higher prices hurt no, legitimate sure. customers who obey the law and are just trying to make it in one of the most expensive cities in the country. Which essentially means that shoplifting is... And, like, you have to make it in one of the most expensive cities in the country. Like, it's... Everything doesn't cost that much less anywhere else. Like rent in New York City might be like $2,500 a month, but rent in another city where there's no jobs at all costs you less or more than half of that, you know, like $1,600 a month or whatever. Like, so, so what do you do if there's only jobs that pay $12 an hour around you? Will you move to a city where there's jobs that have, have more opportunity, but then if everything starts shutting down because there's the crime is rampant because that's where all the people are, then what happens? Well, the crime is going to start moving to other places. And so like nothing is going to be safe. You know, like you think you think that because you live in a small town somewhere away from all this, that like you were safe, but like, you know, in the words of killer Mike, man, you know, that ain't really us that them though, till a peasant put a pistol in your window. Like it, it, it keeps going is a tax on the rest of society. And the more it continues, the more everyone has to pay for the same stuff. But eventually, prices rise to a point where nobody can afford what the store sells. And when that happens, the store has to shut down. Yeah. It can no longer stay open and operate because its prices are too high. And if it brings them down, they won't be able to pay their expenses and make a living. And customers that might be used to shopping at a little place like this, they don't have unlimited money. At a certain point, it will be cheaper to take the subway and waste your time traveling to another part of town that has another store that hasn't been looted to a point where its prices are so high nobody can shop there on top of that the majority of this thievery it's not just one person stealing a loaf of bread no these are organized retail gangs that make a living off stolen <sighs> yeah but like still you know like the reason that it's that way is because things are so expensive like that that's just that's just how that works like there is a there is a commodity being sold which is value. And if you if you can't give that value in the store, and this like comes down to supply chain, I know this comes down to like larger businesses and things, but like, I mean, come on. It's like a systemic problem. I mean, obviously, like you're <laughs> it's not like we're we're talking about this the same way that we talked about drugs and like selling drugs. And like we always demonize the people who are buying that stuff. We always demonize the gangs who are selling it, but it's a market. And markets get filled. That's literally what America is built on. And then we want to come around whenever a market gets created and filled. And we want to act like, no, no, this one's not okay. This one's not okay. It's like, bro, like, this is what we set up. This is the rat race we set up. Like, this is, you know, a thing that's going to happen. Like, we have to look at this. If nothing that we've tried has worked, we have to stop being like, well, let's keep trying the same thing. 
products. And it's so bad and so prevalent, you've got entire swaths of town that now resemble ghost towns in New York City of all places. And the New York Post interviewed several deli and grocery managers who all said when they saw someone stealing who was obviously in need, they did not care. Which means although greed does have a lot to do with why once profitable businesses are shutting down, it's not due to the greed of the business owners. Instead, it's the greed of the shoplifters. They're totally emboldened. So now they, they, they take it an extra step now. They, they want to fight us. They constantly. Uh, it, it's, it's often a battle. Shoplifters have grown so bold. Their illegal business is so profitable. They now feel entitled to the very inventory they never paid for in the first place. And this is why physical altercations inside these stores are now so common. And what that's doing is it's turning the local places who are just trying to survive into complete war zones. And the sad thing is, nobody working at these local businesses gets paid enough money to put their life on the line for a hat, or an apple, or an orange for that matter. Now the governor's new plan to stop shoplifting only increases penalties for shoplifters who also become violent while they are stealing things from a store, which means that if shoplifters go into a store and they're on their best behavior, this new plan won't offer them any new consequences for their behavior. And since the police are powerless to stop these criminals, you've now got a situation where thieves make a living off the backs of the innocent in more ways than one. This Bravo Super market in the Bronx is clean and feeds the neighborhood, but they're also hemorrhaging between one and two thousand dollars a month from theft. Shoplifting is bad. It's terrible. Coffee, cheese, shrimp. Nothing is safe. Several months ago, Jose says a woman came in with a baby stroller, filled it with these logs of salt. So I bought this massive bread. I, I feel like I'm just going to continue to harp on the same thing, but I mean, like, a woman came in with a baby stroller and filled it with with a ton of food to to go and sell. Like I mean, it's the people have this image in their head that criminals love to be criminals. That like they're bad, horrible people and like they do bad, horrible things and like bro, like that's not how human beings work. Like if you had a job that you liked and you made plenty of money at it and you had like a community that you enjoyed being in and like everything was good for you you know what you do the right thing that's what people do and if and if we're saying that like people have degraded to a point that they've become psychopathic and sociopathic in mass and that they're all congregating together to do bad things to, to innocent people. Like we have a bigger problem than putting people, than like putting people in jail can solve. Duh. Rick, a Bustello coffee on Amazon because this was the cheapest I could find these Bustello coffees in. And it even looks like it came from a legitimate distributor. It's shrink wrapped. It's got the cardboard under it. This looks pretty legit. But these little bricks are the same ones that get sold at the supermarket. What if these are stolen and they were placed inside this package? I've got no way of knowing that. Professional thieves are really good now. They will steal things individually and repackage them, sell them online. And all this packaging and stuff that you need to make your product a bundle of 12 packages of espresso is all readily obtainable. This is already a huge problem with other sorts of retail theft, clothing, electronics, stuff like that. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, like, you know, I, I come from a world where, like, you just know that if something is really, really cheap, it's hot. Like, if you found a MacBook on Facebook Marketplace for $200, like, that's a stolen MacBook, you know? Like, you got, you got that five-finger discount, boy, you know? And, like, now you're passing on the savings to the consumer, man, you know? That sucks, man. It does. It really does. Like, you you hope, what you hope, right, is that, like, everyone gets taken care of. The dude who had his MacBook stolen, like, had insurance on it, or, like, he has the funds that he can just buy another MacBook without, or her, without any issues. But, like, you know, man, like, I don't know, like, people get hurt. Like, I it just, you know... Like what you know, this has been going on for a long, long time. It is getting a lot. This is crazy. The idea of that being like stolen, but I mean, you see it all the time on the internet. Like, I mean, look, go look at eBay. Go look at eBay and look at these these computers that have the serial numbers like scraped off of them. Like, go for it. It's they're all over the place. Go look up. Um, go look up. Uh, what are they called? The uh, uh, whatever. Go look up. Go look up a Dell. Go look up a Dell like laptop and just look at all the ones with scraped off serial numbers and, and the photos that just happen to not show the serial number. But food, the same thing's possible if you've got stuff like this that's non-perishable. And what's insane is the reason all of us are shopping online. Dell XPS. 
And in the first place, it's because we're looking for a deal. We're looking to save money. And online, you can do it. And we think, oh, that's just because it's online. It's because this, there's not an actual store that has to pay I things never like think rent. That. And you know something? No. That is partially well, true. I, I also think a lot of times, like, oh, this person bought this. And this is probably what a lot of it is, too. This person bought this laptop. And now they never used it. And now they're broke as a joke and they need it to sell right now because they're not going to be able to pay their rent tomorrow unless it sells and they can get that money in their account in four days. That's a lot of what's going on too. But the store I've been that there. you bought it it's, from, they also don't have to pay for things like inventory because the goods are stolen. And it's ridiculous to think that the entire shoplifting industrial complex operating in this city happens because legitimate people are also the victims of it. We don't understand that we're buying the things that are closing our own stores. And stores like this aren't shut down because Robin Hood was trying to feed the poor by stealing from the rich. You've literally got people raiding local businesses, stealing as much as they can in a half an hour. And since all this inventory costs the thieves absolutely nothing you've got a pure profit business and if the criminals get arrested since they don't go to jail if it's under a thousand dollars they can get right back out they don't even miss work and although these theft operations might enrich the people at the top a lot of the people at the bottom who are doing the actual stealing these are folks who are being exploited people suffering from addiction from homelessness crooks convince them they can earn quick cash today by bringing a trash bag full of beauty supplies yeah but that's like every single business in the world you know like just because this one is illegal, like we're not going to talk about the fact that like the majority of people who are working in restaurants are being exploited and, and suffering from addiction and homelessness. I've worked in restaurants. They're making $11 an hour, man. That's not enough to take care of yourself. They're making $11 an hour, and every time they get anywhere close to overtime, they cut them off and they tell them, oh, you can't finish out this week. You have to go home and come back next week. Like They're being exploited, and, and I think those people are criminals too, you know? Like... You're, you're, you're literally operating a business that doesn't work without the exploitation of other human beings. And you're also like, like adding and contributing to the problem of things being too expensive because there's not enough, there's not enough demand. So it can't drive down the cost detergent or espresso back to a warehouse and without real help from police and from a justice system that cares about businesses like this there's no way it stands a chance against an operation like that and think about a grocery store losing two thousand dollars a month just from shoplifting if your business is already struggling because the between one to three percent Twenty to thirty percent is the average bodega profit margins. Their rent is twenty one thousand dollars a month. If you think that your rent is probably thirty percent of your profit, or thirty percent sorry, not thirty percent of your profit, thirty percent of your sales. Or well, thirty percent of your expenses. I mean, you're still talking like pretty massive profit margins four thousand dollars like one to four thousand dollars a month i mean it's like there's a lot of reasons businesses are failing i'm not totally sold that this is the the main reason that like theft is the main reason like theft is one of the symptoms of the reason that is making businesses fail but i've seen so many posts recently on on instagram and things of people just being like it's not worth it anymore like I can't show up to, to, to do my own business anymore. And like, I get that, bro. Like, things are brutally hard, and they've, they're way harder right now than they were four years ago. That's for sure, especially during COVID and the pandemic when everyone was staying home buying stuff offline. But, like, I think, like, these people who run these businesses have to go home to a house that now costs way more money, and they have to buy stuff in stores that cost way more money. And, like... It's like a you see the cycle like starting to build like it's 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 a lot more complicated than just oh people are stealing and that's the problem I think they want to like that's what they like for you to believe totally you know like Procter and Gamble would love for you to think that it's like the poor people on the street stealing from the store that's causing your neighborhood to be run down 
But I don't really believe that. That doesn't seem logical to me because people have been stealing forever. So, like, why is that happening more now? Huh? Hmm. Weird. The rent's too high, and because your taxes and other fees just for operating are through the roof, a crime-ridden environment could be the final straw, and your business could make the unfortunate decision to close up shop. And who's the winner in a situation like that? Certainly not the business owner, because now they're out of a job. Certainly not everybody who lives around here, because now they're out of stores to shop at. And you know what? It's not even the criminals no. who do the actual stealing, because eventually the store's going to be gone, and they're not going to be able to buy any who, food. Who's it's the, completely who's the destructive. Winner, is this nobody. a total nightmare? Absolutely. And that's why the government is moving forward with this plan to punish violent shoplifters. It's better than nothing, but the real question is, why is it taking the government so long to act on this? Why have so many stores had to close down, people lose their jobs? Because the government's impotent. Like, honestly, right? Like, what, what does the government do, dude? Like, like what, what do they do? They continue to pass laws that restrict people's rights, and, like, they they don't they don't do anything bro like there was a time where the government went through and were like whoa times are really bad let's help the system like like let's let's help solve things but like go and look at where all that covid relief money went to like it sure wasn't to help people you know this isn't the great depression when we started like giving out <laughs> giving out all kinds of like food stamps and welfare to help the world like we've reduced things like that we've reduced the ability for people to get food stamps now we've made it so that like less people than ever who need it more than ever can get it because the government doesn't have any money anymore well they're still collecting taxes aren't they I wonder where it's going, guys. That's wild, right? What are they going to do? What are they going to do? What are they going to do? Interfere in the market? Have, they're going to have to set up martial law in New York City? Uh, customers no. lose their shopping centers. Sadly, it's because the people they running New York don't see shopping. They got to get reelected so they can keep one of the only good paying jobs in the country. Because if they don't get reelected, they can't get a job because there's no jobs, bro. Is that they don't have any skills, bro. They they're a politician. Like, what do you think they do, dude? Deal, apparently. Those those thieves, man. They vote. <laughs> they can't vote. You once you get you know can't vote once you get charged. But like, you know what I'm saying, man. Like, they don't want to be unpopular. They look like they're doing something without doing something. Keep as many people who like you as possible. Card ah, uh, card. You ever have people come in here and try to steal stuff? Um, yeah. Bro, <laughs> that guy was really cool about it. I would, I would like if if someone walked in into Black Sheep and was like, "You ever have people come in here and try to like leave without paying the bill?" I'd be like, "Bro, if you do that, I'm gonna call the cops. Do not do that." Do you think there's a store in New York City that's never been shoplifted from? That's hard. <laughs> that's a hard one. Cause it's like there's so many people in this city. Yeah, <laughs> it's so many people in this city. The lawlessness, the chaos. Well, and like obviously, there's not a store. There's not a store in the world that hasn't been shoplifted from. If I had to guess, like if you if you think of shoplifting as as not paying for one item and like sneaking it out, if you think of shoplifting as like which it is like going through a self checkout line and and like that's shoplifting too. Like there's not a store in the world that hasn't been shoplifted from. Probably every I bet there's. There might not be a store in the world that every single day that it's open doesn't get shoplifted from at least once. That is going on in our stores, in our communities all over the state of New York. It must stop. Governor Hochul now pledging $25 million for a dedicated retail theft unit within the state police. $15 million for district attorneys and $5 can't see million to help wrong. businesses with security. Can't see how that could be like tonight. harassment waiting to happen. Merchants. So here's some good news from the governor. $45 million, that's a lot of money. But unfortunately, it won't all go to purposes that people think are going to have an effect. No, but it's it also won't. Worth Most of it will go to people's pockets, right? Because like I said, like the grocery's expensive, bro. <laughs> like... They gotta put it in there. They gotta take that forty-five million so they can feed their families, dog. That's why they're passing this.
worth noting that it's not the governor's fault or the mayor's fault that we have a shoplifting problem in this state. After all, they didn't write the laws that have led us to the place we're at today. And to a certain extent, their tools for dealing with an out-of-control crime crisis are somewhat limited. So first up, we've got $25 million for the police who can arrest people who then get released because the laws here don't jail people for stealing. Now, yes, the state police, they're the ones who bust a lot of these big-time retail theft rings. Fines, and the leaders right? Are... Like, it's not like nothing's going to happen to them. They'll get fined. And like, and then those fines will have to be paid somehow, or those people will go back to jail. But like, it's it's a it's a it's a shakedown, right? They don't want to put them in jail because they put them in jail. Taxpayer dollars have to go to paying for them to be in jail, so they don't want to do that because they need that taxpayer money to line their own pockets with. So what are they doing instead? Well, they put them in they put they put them in the slammer for a night. They take them out. They find them. They they run through the court system. They make it their first offense. And then they hopefully collect that money from them so they can keep funding the police force. Those to operations are responsible for way more than $1,000 worth of theft. And the leaders might get locked up, but the low-level criminals who are still out there robbing these stores, shutting them down, they're still walking the earth. There's also $15 million set aside for district attorneys to go after the... And, like, this is... Like, I, want, like, I want you guys to know that, like, I'm not sitting here being like, ooh, those... Those police, like, it's no, it's like, it's not their fault. Like, it's, it's a system. It's a systemic issue, right? Like, we've created a system that worked for a while, but, like, seems to not be working anymore. And no one knows what to do. Like, it's like a, like a, a, a giant problem, an enormous problem, bigger than anyone can really understand or comprehend. Like, the, 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 the reaches of society breaking down is something that, that will have knock-on effects that could, that could change life as we know it. And we're just trying to point fingers? Because if we feel like if we can point a finger, like, you're the problem, then we'll solve something. But, like... If you do that to people who aren't the problem, then you don't solve anything and you still have that problem. These criminals. But the whole problem in New York City is that progressive laws that protect criminals instead of punishing them. Those laws exist because people believe in them. Judges believe in them. District attorneys even believe in them. So yeah, the people yeah, that totally. are it's wrong to, to steal. The criminals end up feeling bad Taking for them. From some, that someone that like earned that thing without you having earned it is wrong. It harms people. That's bad. We believe that. That's like, we all believe that. But like, is it wrong to let people starve to death? Is it wrong to price people out of their homes? them and may not be asking for the harshest penalties they could which might actually land somebody behind bars but the last five million dollars this could actually do something because it has to do with grants related to in-store security for local businesses who need it the most for example things like security guards security cameras these could help in discouraging crime at the source but that brings up an interesting question about all this if a five million dollar grant to businesses that's almost like an it's job creation <laughs> You're losing four thousand dollars a month. You take three thousand dollars of that. You pay a security guard three grand a month, bro. He gets a couple shifts around the city. You know, he he made like six grand a month. You know, that's like that's your rent, bro. You know, there's a job there, bro. That's like seventy two grand a year. Like that's good money, dude. But right there, dude. You know, like you saved a thousand dollars. You're like you're solving the problem with like you know you install a security cameras. Say that thousand dollars you install security cameras. That's a one time purchase. You don't have to keep paying for that. Like and then you know you've, you're you're like helping solve the problem there. You know like mission that things stealing. are happening inside the business that the city's not able to stop and the business needs more resources to deal with it themselves so why not give businesses the whole 35 million at the end of the day if even bananas are being stolen and there's nothing the police can do about it why not give businesses the resources to tackle this problem on their own but money for businesses mm, because you give people money and then they don't use it for the right thing that's like they don't know how to take care of the problem. They don't know what the like how to solve the problem, right? Like that's like that's the truth, right? It's like, why don't we just give the businesses thirty five million dollars? Because like, how many people do you think that run a bodega are also security experts? How much of that money, like you thirty five million dollars divided across ten thousand bodegas in New York City? I don't have any idea of these numbers. Ten thousand bodegas in New York City, like that's not as much money as you think it is per per business, and then like. What are they going to do? Pay a security expert to come in? Like, how many security? I mean, it would create industry, I guess. But like, 
it historically doesn't work when you just give people money. You know, that's all. That's a good way to waste a bunch of money. That's definitely better than what other local leaders here have tried to come up with. One local leader wants to start taxing landlords who have vacant storefronts. How about we just give people the money to stay alive so people don't have to run businesses that put their lives in danger? How about that? Like, what's going to happen to the people who go out of business? Like, what are they going to do? Where are they going to work? What are we just going to become homeless? Like, what do we do? Come on. Now, think about that for a second. If the store closed and left because games. they weren't making enough money to pay the rent, if the landlord has to take less rent, they're essentially subsidizing the activities of shoplifters who lowered that business's margins through theft to cause them to shut down in the first place. But okay, there's a new plan on the table. How long is it going to take to work? And will it save businesses from shutting down completely? And what do local business owners think about this? They're releasing... Repeat criminals, crime hurts us. Indeed, crime hurts all of us. Now, Hochul's proposal is actually for next year's fiscal budget. Oh, okay. So it's at least one year away. Meanwhile, criminals are still going to walk around doing what they've always done. And even if businesses do hire guard dogs and put up cameras and install security apparatuses, what does anyone think the result of that is actually going to be when there is a legal system and a justice system on the other end of all that security footage that isn't actually going to punish anybody? Because at the end of the day, the reason we've got such a problem with repeat offenders is because the first time offenders were never punished in the first place. And what's truly fascinating about this new push to try and stamp out crime is it comes after an So are people literally just being arrested and then being released? Like with no, there's nothing that happens for them? Like that doesn't make any sense. Like what's the point of even taking them to jail? Just let them do it. If like first time offenders, like, you know, if nothing happens, like a fine is something. But, like, I think desperation makes you be like, oh, well, you know, what else am I going to do? Effort that started a year ago to try and expand the number of food-related businesses in areas that are lacking. And if you're not sure how you can have no grocery store in an area with lots of people, then you haven't been paying attention to this video. This new business has opened as part of the New York City program called Fresh. The program offers zoning and tax benefits. <laughs> for grocery store owners to open in areas that the city says have limited access. So grocery stores have been... Opening up like smoke shops. <laughs> you give out, you know, grants for stuff like that. You're going to get like... I don't know if you guys have seen it. There's just smoke shops everywhere now, man. It's crazy. Everyone's just like waiting for marijuana to get legalized. Just smoke shops. Like the same like little neon lights. Not neon, but like LED lights around the outside. Open sign that just flashes even when they're closed because no one runs them because some high child in there working. Struggling for a long time. We know this. And a year ago, the same guy who owns like five stores, women in the street. They I'm don't have enough money to operate. For some reason, which we can't seem to identify, stores lose money, they close, they leave, and people have nowhere to buy food. And Like you can't, there's not enough money to operate because things are so expensive. Like, I don't know how people don't get this. Like, like, it, like, it's, it's not, like, I... If your rent is $21,000 a month, like that that $1,000 to $4,000 a month that you are making or losing off of theft, like that's a very small percentage of that $21,000 and that's not even your expenses. That's not all of them. That's just, just your rent, 30%, you know, 30% of your overhead probably. Like four grand, a grand, a grand. Let's say, let's say, let's say two grand. That's right in the middle. Two grand a month, man. Like I know that's extra money, but like, I mean, if you're making, if you're making 80 grand, you know, two grand, like that's the thing that's, that's sinking you, you know, if you need 80 grand to exist, like that's the thing that's sinking you. I don't know. I don't know. Obviously, last year's program to try and expand stores by giving them discounts and not admitting the whole reason why stores have trouble staying open has missed the mark completely. And here we are a year later with those same types of stores having an even tougher time trying to make it in New York's crime-ridden environment. And you know something? It's really hard to have a crime-free environment when the people who are supposed to enforce the laws regarding crime view all criminals as victims. For example, some schools of thought see criminals as victims of a society that has been unfair to them in some manner, which gives them permission to victimize store owners owners who are obvious no i don't i don't victimize a store owner but criminals like i mean like we built the world you know we did and a lot of people get stepped on because of it and like there are people with mental illness that have to live in that same world and they can't find the pathway out 
like, I mean, that is real. Like, just because you don't want it to be, just because you want to give people the death penalty doesn't make it not real. <laughs> it is. People, like, you cannot just go, well, these people must be fundamentally different than I am. Like, think of what would make you do that and then assume that that's happening to those people. Obviously wealthier and better off than they are. While at the exact same time, those business owners are seen as victims of the landlords who they rent from who charge so much that they have to shut down. And so Everyone's a victim, bro. The world is, the world is messed up, dude. Think for a moment about how different New York City would be if we lived in a place where when criminals did something wrong, they lost their freedom. They were not allowed to roam the streets. They were not- You, you don't have prisons big enough. And if you like, Not allowed to go back home and Whatever. sleep at night and think about what crimes they were going to commit the next day. You would probably have zero retail theft rings operating if all of the criminals. What if everyone had a job? What if everyone had a good job? What if what if there was like a a minimum income that was livable and you could go work six hours a day at McDonald's and still have the rest of your life to do what you want to do and you could still afford to live? What if what if we did that? You know who are doing the actual people buy 30 million dollar houses multiple of them dealing were behind bars if these crime kingpins who are selling on every single website can't find workers they're gonna have to shut down not the stores they steal from and in a world where everyone who does something wrong is actually a victim of somebody else who deserves it you don't actually have any no one deserves it no one deserves it like, no one deserves to be a victim. No one deserves to have bad things happen to them. That's what this guy, I, th I think, is like. Like, he wants to frame this ideology around the concept of, like, oh, people think that the people in power are the problem. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. But I don't think that the people in the bottom are the problem. Right? Like, why would they be? Do they seem to, like, have control over anything that's going on? Does that make sense? Like, do, do, when you think about that, like, do you think that the crackheads on the street, like, do you think that they're the ones who are, like, controlling everything? So, like, then how are they the problem? Like, they seem like they're being affected by everything. So, like, cause and effect, you know, it moves down the chain. Criminals, do you? Is that the right attitude? Is it New York City's attitude? What should we do here to stop this out of control, peaceful shoplifting epidemic? Let me know. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, that was a good video. I I, I liked that video. I it's it's bizarre to watch something and like this so, is it's bizarre to watch now something like, oh. and sort of disagree with it, but still but still, like, believe in, in the things that are being talked about, you know? Like, like, I agree with a lot of what he says. I just think that, like, he's framing it from this point of view of, like, you must think this other thing if you disagree with any of my points. And, like, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that other thing. I don't believe that the landlords are the problem. I don't believe that, that the, the business owners are the problem. I think that the problem is that everyone constantly needs more money every single day of their lives, nonstop, and that amount of money that they need extra continues to grow, and there's nothing that we know to do about it. Nothing works. Like, it's out of control. <laughs> like, what are we going to do in the next 10 years? If it continues to raise, if in four more years, egg whites are $28 a container instead of 14 from the seven that they were four years ago, and then if four more years after that, they're $56 a container, and I'm still making $11 an hour at that restaurant that I work at, well, it's going to take me, oh, seven hours to buy a container of egg whites to eat for you know, a week of breakfast, or, you know, two weeks of breakfasts. Like, we have to figure out how to control that. And so far, nobody really has any ideas because most people are an educator. <laughs> and, like, we can't, you know, we don't know what to do because education is too expensive. Uh, that's neither here nor there. Okay, guys, well, you know, it was a good video. Give this channel a subscribe, a subscribe and watch this video. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. It was good. I like that guy, Cash Jordan. Like, you know, he makes good content. His videos are awesome, dude. Like, the the filming was incredible. The This shot of a banana is amazing. Good job, dude. Good job on the video. Appreciate you.